Yeah. Yeah. The Board of County Commissioners nine session. We'll have the prayer followed with the pledge. Heavenly Father, we just ask this morning to touch the County Commission to make the right decision. Father, touch all our county workers, Lord, our seafood workers, Lord. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One, One nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we don't have no minutes. Let's the payment of the bills. So moved. Second. I have a motion second the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Department heads, uh, how are neighbors? Good morning, commissioners. How y'all doing? All right. Good morning. I got a couple of items that on especially on the grass and stuff the way it's growing i know we get a lot of call ins on the grass but when you cut that grass in a couple of weeks that grass is grows right back up and like i said before we just make our path through the county and then we start back over so and uh on the uh on our signs we, we got a lot of problem with people running over our signs and stuff which is probably anywhere from 60 to 80 dollars to replace that post and that sign that's been going on for probably a year or so. So it's every bit of maybe to hundred. Yes, sir. They high. They got that little thing on top. It's yeah, it, it, it depends on your sign. Yes, sir. And a, another issue that we got, which has been going on with our log trucks, uh, tearing our roads and stuff up, side the roads. And we've been dealing with that too for a while, but. Like the mill road that we've been having to go back and fix. I so. went to him the other day and told him we wanted to move him off of that to the button side and he's supposed to move him. Okay. But I know the people call us and you know, y'all's roads are tore all to pieces. So I said, yes, ma'am, we'll try to get out and fix it. But yeah, when you fix that, that third hour later, the truck it's tore back up. Yes, yeah, sir, that's what I'm saying. I went back down and they drug it again and they were still coming back. So I mm -hmm. took the state man over there and he's supposed to move them to the buck side okay okay how about lake morality road uh they've been logging in there too we fixed one spot with some milled asphalt where the road was busting up and I, i'm aware that i think that he's coming out in another spot now which we went back this morning to see if we could try to fix it well m my thing is they unless i'm mistaken alan did you get any papers from forestry asking for permission to use no, 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 lake morality road well, and it concerned me because uh, they had made a loading ramp off of Lake Morality Road and yeah, scraped out all the grass that was on the side of it mm -hmm. and blocked the ditches, and I'm real concerned about that. Mm -hmm. And that's between the curve where, um, that's on the bad curve right there mm -hmm. by the moon, what we call the moon, moon road. road. Yeah. yeah, and um, at several other spots. But I, I know it's a truck route, but they're supposed to ask permission, forestry is supposed to ask permission to do this. And so I'm going to direct, because it, it may be a legal thing, I'm going to direct Michael Schuler to get with Howard. And y'all get with um, David Morse, M-O-R-S-E, mm -hmm. with the uh, Division of Forestry. He's a Timberland manager. And also Clint Davis, who is the operations manager for Tate Hill. And whatever damage they're doing to that road, they're going to have to pay for it. Uh, because uh, they undermine that road. We've already had problems with it that we had to go back in there and repay the section of it. So, it, I mean, it, it, it's a bad situation, and that is the um, uh, truck route. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we've got to be careful of how we do that. And so, as well, Michael, the, our county road, the mill road? Yes, sir. The river road, them, to get them with that one too. The yeah. tower's having to steady. We can't yeah. just keep a grader on it every day. Well. Yeah. Uh, Yes, sir. A few months ago, uh, the forestry sent a letter to Allen, if I'm not mistaken, Allen. Well, yeah, well, a year ago, requesting permission to log off of county roads, and these roads were not included in this. It was off, mm -hmm. off of 67. And we told them at that time they needed to request a bond from the logging company mm -hmm. to, to repair any damage. And see, you've already put lime, I mean, uh, milled asphalt out there. Yeah. So if y'all don't, I'm gonna go ahead and do that by motion, mm -hmm. and that way I'll give the direction to wherever it needs to go to, uh, to to take and get a hold of. I think it's a black logging company, mm -hmm. and doing all of it. I don't know what's doing it over on Mill Road, 
I don't know. That was some other company. Yeah, but this was black. This is yeah. Gary Black. I'll second the motion. Yeah. I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Anything, anybody, anything for Howard? Thank you, Howard, for taking care of that. Mm -hmm. No well. Right, thank you, Howard. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of that. Fonda Davis, solid waste. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see smiling faces up in this morning. <laughs> I have a couple of things for you all. Uh, first one is need a signature from the chairman on the grant application. Need a motion. Second. Have a motion. Second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. For the right one was the grant. It looks small. Okay. Solid waste. Yeah. How much it is this year? Sorry. How much it is did you? Uh, 90,909. Okay. Question, uh, Mr. Chairman, do we get every year about the same amount? Yes. Uh, well, the last year here, uh, we just found out we was going to get the full amount. They was trying to cut it down. And I think it cut it in half. Yeah, Commissioner Watson, this is on the legislature funds, and I'll be honest with you, it used to be a substantial amount of money. I mean, a half a million dollars or more in the good years, and it's been being slowly been cut back over time. Uh, but we it's, it's, a, it's a legislative funded project, and so you never know from year to year how much it's going to be. Well, and it had been been it was two hundred and something thousand dollars, and then it went down to seventy seven. Now it's went back up to ninety. So that they're working on it. Um, there's some stuff. There's some language in the solid waste uh, grant uh, concerning DEP, and they kind of like kicked back on a little bit, and that's what caused our money to go down a little bit. But now it's going back up where it needs to be at. <clears throat> okay. And uh, next thing, I would like the board to approve me a vacation of July the 10th through and returning on the 19th. So moved. Second. Okay. Yeah. I have a motion second. Four all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Albert will be in charge. Yes, Albert. Albert Floyd will be in charge. Okay. Give, give me that, give that number. Okay. For Albert. 899 four zero zero three. Okay. That's it. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, actually, it's the uh, approval of the awarding of the um, SHISCAP, the Homeland Security Grant, to the Management Experts LLC. Uh, we were thought we'd have the contract ready, but after going to the procurement class on Friday, we found out that uh, I still need to go back, and there's some things that have to be added to that contract now. And with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to the clerk's office. This. This procurement process does not just uh, include emergency management and a disaster. It's any federal monies that you use to build something, buy something, you have to go by these new procurement process. And I'm going to make copies and give every department head, because like I told Howard, during a disaster, normally anything over $10,000, we have to have board approval. FEMA says no, it's 3000 So we need to buy sandbags. If, you're, if your sandbags is going to cost you over $3,000, then you have to go out and get three quotes in the middle of a disaster. But that's the new procurement process. But know. it doesn't just apply to disaster. It applies to any federal dollars that you're spending, that your grants that you're spending, you have to go by this new process. How many sandbags do you keep on hand? I've got 10,000 filled in my warehouse, but I'm just saying that, you know, things like that, like gas, when we use up all his gas and Virginia has to go out, normally Virginia gets the lowest price. Well, with the new procurement process, Virginia's going to have to document that she got these bids. Pam, just for clarification for the record, are you asking the board to approve the award today and, and then the yes. contract later or yes. wait until no. do everything uh, with the uh, contract They will later. approve the award then all I'll get with you because, Michael, there's some language in there that I really don't know how to put in a contract. 
Okay. I mean, I have our old contract, our standard contract that we normally use for our training and exercise, but with the new procurement process, uh, when you start talking about debarment and other things, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to word that. So I'll have to get with you to help me word that in that contract. Okay. Okay. And then we'll bring the contract back to the board. Okay. That's right. So just a wording of that um, bid to her. So I move. Second. <clears throat> have a motion second for all in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. There's one more item that's not on my report. Um, I've got Jenny trying to set up a meeting with the sheriff's office this morning to talk to them about uh, dispatch. Uh, in my new scope of work for my EMPA grant, which is over a hundred and something thousand dollars, which basically runs our office. The new scope of work says that if dispatch does not answer the NAWAS phone and the EM net when the state calls them, they're going to take 10% of my grant per quarter. I have no control over the sheriff's office or dispatch. I'm going out to talk to them and try to tell them, you know, if you got a problem, you need training, whatever, let me help you with it. But these things have to be answered. Otherwise, they're going to take 10% of, of my grant money from us per quarter. That's a lot of money coming out of that grant. And then I'll, you know, I get a report and I send it to the sheriff's office showing that it's showing that, you know, EMNet's offline, NAWALS is offline. Of course, NAWALS has had a ticket on it for repair for ever since I've been director and yet to get it fixed. So this morning I'm going out there to actually try to figure out what's wrong with that line. They have not got that thing fixed yet, Pam? As far as I know, no. And if they have, they're not answering the phone when the state calls. Now I know they're really busy and I really don't see, and I'm going to talk to Brian Coon. I don't know who, you know, the state puts the scope of work in there. Federal government don't put that scope of work in. They do. Um, I'm not the only county that is not under a sheriff's office. And if you read the state statute, you're not supposed to be under the sheriff's office. You're supposed to be under y'all. Um, so why are you tying my money to the sheriff's office? Mm -hmm. But yet in that same grant, it tells me that I cannot spend money for 911. I cannot spend any of that money on fire, and I cannot spend any of that money on law enforcement. But yet you're tying my grant to it. Well, would they allow? For the code to come, let's say to the sheriff office plus like to this office. To mine, I have a um, I have a I have a backup system, but I don't have a backup net loss. No, what I'm saying is like to Michael. If it, it's the county warning point, it has to be that office is, and it's the only office in the county that runs 24/7. So no, you basically can't move that office unless we're willing to put somebody in my office. 24 hours a day. So it got to be with somebody in the 24. 24 hours a day. Yes. It sounds like you need to get a hold of Brian King and talk. I'm, to I'm going to talk to them first. I'm going out, you know, and I'm going to talk to the sheriff about that and see if we can work this out. And if there's a problem with their machines, if they're offline, then if they need fixing, whatever we need to do to get it up and running. Yeah, because the majority of your your operations money is through it's through grant. that EMPA grant. Yeah. That's a hundred so and something thousand be, dollars that yeah. I'll lose ten percent of that every quarter. Yeah. But again, they're gonna get the state's gonna get some pushback from me and I'm going to email Liberty County. Ron doesn't run under the sheriff, the other ones. Uh, you know, this is unfair to tie my grant to that. Who but yet tell me I can't spend money to help them train or anything else. Who the other up, up on what them other county? Who they up on? Uh, Liberty County's under their commissioners. Uh, Gulf County's under their commissioners. You've got several counties that's under their it's under their commissioners. Mainly small, small, small counties. Mainly small counties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what you can find out and report back. To I just wanted y'all to be aware of this because it's coming up budget. So I'm going out to talk to him today and see if we can work something out. Because again, you know, once my budget is agreed on and then they start taking 10% out because they're not answering the phone out there. How are we going to adjust that? Do you need a motion and a second on that? 
No, I was just, this was information. Okay. I just want to let y'all know that I am going out to, you know, to try to work that out with them and see what's going on out there. Um, but that is a stipulation in uh, my grant as far as that grant's concerned. Well, uh, Kyle Bryan can meet with the sheriff, see if he can work it out, and then if the board needs to get involved in it, let us know. Okay. Okay, the next meeting. And then we'll try to do what we can do to take care of it. Okay. Our end. That's it for me. <laughs> All right, you back game. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. All right. Eric Lovestrand. Morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Just a couple of things to note um, from our report, a couple of updates there. I was able to attend the ANREP meeting this year, which is our Natural Resource Extension Professionals meeting um, on the national level. And uh, it was funded through our Sea Grant program and through some funds from our district extension director's office. So that was good. It covered all of my travel for that. And we actually, for our extension program, um, received the gold award for promotional materials in that category of awards that they give out for the products that we produced during the first year of our sea turtle lighting retrofit work. We had a couple of printed pieces. We also had a radio PSA that we did. And then we also developed a website where people could go for more information on that topic. And so we're honored to have the top award in that category for that national recognition for the program. Also, just an update on the um, youth. We have 22 youth now that are planning to go to summer camp. And mm -hmm. we have $2,300 committed in um, donations for that. Um, special thanks to people that have been working hard on that. Our office manager, Michelle, has really been reaching out Commissioner um, Watson has also reached out to some folks and we've gotten good information in the local paper about that. So people have been sending us donations and requesting more information about the camp program. It's really an important thing for our youth to be able to have access to that. And this is um, probably the best year that we'll ever have had to date in a number of kids going to a summer camp program like this. And that's just a couple things I wanted to make note of. Don't have anything in addition to that for the commissioners. Anybody you think, Eric? Now, I just want to say thank you for the support from the University of Florida for the uh, Florida County's Foundation uh, uh, Advanced Commissioners, Certified Commissioners programs and the yes. Torchbearer programs. They're very much needed and used in there and we are very ecstat ecstatic that we can say that $100,000 has been pledged by the University of Florida. I got a chance to talk to Dr. Nick Clay. Yes. And he said to tell you how I... Well, thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I strongly support that program with commissioners. <laughs> well, he did. He said to tell you how I want to pay you. That's our Dean of Extension, Dr. Nick Place. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. He is a good guy. Yep. yep. Good guy. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. The money and the plants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll crack he, the he knows about the plan. I'm going to look at him. He knows about the plan. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chairman, uh, Ms. Lisa Bress is probably running a little late. I, I think we had a cross in our communication. She thought she should have been here at 10. And so I would recommend we go ahead with Mr. Cooper. Okay. And when Lisa gets here, I'll let you know we could take her then. Okay. All right, Mr. Mike Cooper. morning commissioners how are you all right um, hope you enjoyed your holiday um, got a little bit different um, format this morning um, I normally don't like uh, to uh, single out individuals for praise because um, um, you know we, we try to promote teamwork um, but there are occasions where where individuals do go way above and beyond and and you need to point that out and so um, I'm going to ask uh, Jared Wester to come up here and um, uh, let you guys hear about a couple uh, stories that um, just uh, happened well one of them happened last well Saturday I think it was so um, he's going to talk about um, some things and um, introduce you to some of the folks that were directly involved so I'll let him do that first 
Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Chairman. How are we doing this morning? All right. Good. Uh, we're we're really proud of our whole EMS team. I mean, I, I, I can't say enough how amazing this team of, of individuals are, the professionalism that they, they put forth every day. The talent that we have on the team is, is phenomenal, and I think you, you all have seen that as well in our community. We're beginning to see a lot of really, really good stories come out. Uh, but specifically, like Mr. Cooper said this morning, we, we generally try to you know, focus on the team as a whole, but specifically every once in a while, uh, a situation happens that it, it's worthwhile to bring forth those individuals to recognize them. So I'm going to ask um, Travis Osborne and Jody Daniels to come up and join me up at the podium here for just a moment. In the uh, early morning hours of July the 2nd, the other morning while they're making their way up, Travis is one of our EMTs. You guys have all known him probably for years and years. Jody Daniels is a recent addition to the team. He's a paramedic that came to us from over in the Calhoun County area. Uh, these two were on a patient transport on the early morning hours, and when I say early morning hours, I mean the twilight hours of, of July the 2nd, uh, taking a patient from Weems over to Tallahassee. Uh, when all of a sudden a Wakulla County Ambulance, and you got to correct me if I messed the story up, but Wakulla County Ambulance came around them lights and sirens, and they said, man, there must be something going on up the road here. Uh, and sure enough, uh, just up the road from that, and you probably saw this in the news and several different articles that were floating around out there, there was a major horrific scene. Uh, just up the road from them, a uh, bus full of 30 plus passengers collided with an 18 wheel truck in the middle of an intersection at Woodville Highway and Highway 98. Um, obviously at this point, uh, Wakulla County had arrived just, just prior to us. We pulled in just behind them. And then also we had, uh, they were beginning to have a few law enforcement things show up. But aside from that, we were really some of the first on the scene uh, at this really, really horrific accident. Travis jumped out first to take a look at the, the scene. Jody was obviously still in the back with, a, with our patient. Uh, jumped out to take a look, and in his words, there were people everywhere. I mean, it was as bad as you can imagine uh, a scene like that to look. Uh, he came back in, made contact with, with Paramedic Daniels, and they came up with a quick, a quick plan right there on the spot, which is phenomenal for them. They found a way to kind of tuck their patient away for the moment, who was very stable, tuck them away for the moment. Both of them jumped out, and I want to paint the scene, and we generally try to leave details out and all those types of things, but for this type of thing, I want to paint this scene so that you can understand the level of, of uh, dedication that these two individuals put forward. This wreck involved a very, very full bus full of folks, uh, none of which, very few of which could speak any English. So there was a, a big communication barrier there that collided T-bone style with an 18 wheel truck. You can imagine the type of damage that would cause right in the middle of a very high speed road, two very high speed roads. Uh, that resulting wreck caused a fire on the bus. Everything was beginning to have you know, burn at this point, and also some power lines were involved in all the wreckage. That's a lot of danger to any, any type of scene. Um, aside from that, though, these two fellows behind me here jumped out of our truck, took their patient away, made a quick plan of attack with, along with the guys that were there from Wakulla County, uh, jumped on board the burning bus with power lines on the other end of the scene, now, obviously being as safe as they possibly could, but jumped on board the burning bus to pull off multiple, multiple patients some of which probably wouldn't have made it off that bus had it not been for these two fellows you see behind you right here. Now, it wasn't just them. There was a, a multitude of people. They're probably going to kick me later for bringing them up and giving them this much individual recognition, but they deserve it. Uh, they went in and pulled multiple folks off that bus that probably wouldn't have made it. Shortly after that, the tank exploded on the, on the bus. The fire got even bigger. They, uh, at one point, I think Travis said he had one over each shoulder and one in each arm, and and out the back door he was going with them. They, they treated probably 10 or 15 people right there on scene. And then out of the probably 10 or so very, very critical, we call trauma alert patients, uh, that were transported off that scene, we took two uh, on our own. Stacked two in the back of the ambulance. Uh, Mr. Daniels was in the back with both of those patients that were extremely critical. <clears throat> we put the other patient, tucked them away up in the front, uh, and just did the best we could to get all three patients to the hospital, continuing our original transport but then also taking care of some very, very sick folks in the process. Uh, I wish I could tell you that this was a singular incident, but I gotta be really honest with you and tell you that this, is, this, this type of behavior, this type of dedication is just absolutely true for the team as a whole. Um, the level of professionalism, the level of dedication to be willing to jump in, it doesn't matter that the bus is on fire, it doesn't matter what's going on, they, they figure out a way to put others in front of themselves. These two. Uh, that stand behind me here are, are an absolute representation of the team as a whole. And I wanted to bring them before you guys this morning um, just to recognize them for their efforts and give you a moment. I have to say, Jared, I've already heard about it. I had some of the county law type call me and tell me about 
especially Travis jumping in there. I said, I can just imagine him doing that. That's the type of person he is. But, you know, this is what we're about. Mm -hmm. This is what y'all are about. And that's saving lives. And that's near and dear to Travis's heart, I can tell you right there. Mm -hmm. So um, we appreciate everything that y'all have done, how you went to the aid of a, a fellow county mm -hmm. to help them. Because you know what? They do the same for us. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Sure is. I commend you for doing that. Good job, fellas. Keep up the good work. You're doing a very good job. I know Travis. He, he told him, do a good job. He, well, don't say nothing. He's my baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Travis. Travis has been around for many, many years. That's a big baby, Miss Anderson. <laughs> 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 I love that. Oh. All righty. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Another couple of just very quick notes before I, I turn loose from up here. Uh, we we uh, have the brand new ambulance that you, you were all very gracious to let us get. That, that came in. We drove out to Houston and picked it up a couple weeks ago. It's fully re uh, ready to rock and roll. It's on the road. It looks great. I mean, it is a wonderful truck. You'll remember we had to do all of the safety upgrades for the Triple K upgrades that, that I come spoke to you guys about back in early March, I believe it was. Uh, those have made a big difference. The stretcher locking system the strap system for the for the uh, folks in the back all, all of which were great upgrades really proud of that truck and it looks great it's going to do a good job for us other one is online we're looking at getting it uh, the one that will replace the wreck truck uh, it'll be here in november for us so uh, spoke with the folks at fraser while we were there and that process is ticking right along as well uh, looking looking really well there too um, and we last note we were awarded a, a county grant uh, this last month and the total of $12,000 with a 90-10 match for somewhere a little above uh, $13,000. I wanted to bring one of the pieces of equipment ahead so you guys could see it just uh, with your own eyes. And we now have these in, on every truck in Franklin County, and this is a big, big addition. This is a video laryngoscope. Uh, the price tag on this is uh, up, upwards of $2,000. This scope itself, now we have on every single unit in our county, uh, we can actually, this is a, a scope that goes down the throat of the patient to let us actually visualize every part where we put the, the tubes to make sure we can get those in the right places. This is a piece of life-saving equipment that I can't even begin to put a price tag on. Uh, we were able to get this on a grant, the grant funds through the state of Florida. Uh, we're very, very excited about the, the good things that are happening. This is just one piece. Uh, obviously, you can see that there's a lot of great things happening on the EMS side of the house. Just want to share those with you this morning. I appreciate your time. And new truck got some bright lights. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <it> does. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. All right. Um, just to follow right along with the EMS, um, uh, last week uh, John did propose uh, an upgraded budget um, for the uh, to maintain the full-time third truck. So, as you deliberate budget um, in the next couple weeks. Please know that that is about a $250,000 addition to keep that truck as a full-time ALS truck as opposed to the part-time BLS truck that it once was. Um, beyond that, just a couple quick updates. You've heard me talk about uh, LIP funding several times over the last several months. Um, uh, week before last, um, I went, I had lunch with um, some, some folks with um, the Florida Hospital Association. And the latest on that, the latest prognostication, because nothing's been settled yet, is that um, at the time they were about $30 million short on the budget for the entire LIP program for the state. And I know that sounds like a huge amount of money, but when you're talking about I, I want to say it's like $750 million is what's in the LIP program. It's not nearly as much um, uh, as, far as, as far as a percentage. So they, they think they'll actually get it fully funded, um, and then it becomes an issue of how they're going to disperse it because that the dispersal mechanism is what the feds and the state are clashing about. Um, for us, that means about an additional $600,000 a year. Uh, this past year, between DISH and LIP, we got a little over $300,000. This program, the way it's designed, been redesigned, 
would give us over a million dollars in, in revenue. Um, so it's something I'm keeping my eye on very closely. Um, and the, like I said, the, the latest report was very positive that that would happen. Um, <clears throat> to put this in perspective, the, the LIP program is basically there for indigent, it reimburses hospitals for indigent patients. Um, we, are our, we are either the first or second hospital in the state as far as a percentage of our overall business that's indigent. Um, and if you think about the big safety net hospitals in Jacksonville and Miami, um, that, that says something. As, as a percentage of our overall revenue, we're number one or number two in the state as far as, as, as indigent. So the LIP funding is extremely critical for us. Um, I don't have much of a, a, an update um, from when Mark was here two weeks ago other than to let you know that hopefully this week or next week he'll be having um, a meeting with the uh, president of that third party he was talking about. The, the president of the third party has been on a Christian mission in Europe for the last uh, week and a half. So um, he's due back this week and um, they're trying to get it scheduled so they can meet. Um, sorry. So they can meet um, this week or early next week. Um, and then the last thing I would mention is that um, the other thing we talked about uh, two weeks ago was the, the, the sheriff's office. Um, Ginger was on vacation, then I was on vacation, so we're planning to meet this week and hopefully fine tune some numbers and get back to you with whatever uh, scenario we can. So. Um, at this point, that's that's all I have for you. But Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I had a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Mr. Cooper, um, on the calls uh, for the ambulance, do you have those figures for the last year? Does it uh, fluctuate during the high season or the oh, winter season? Absolutely, it does fluctuate, and um, they're still here. Uh, but our overall volume for the entire year um, is up about 12 percent. Um, so not just, it does go up during the busy season, the, the tourist season, but even in the Januaries and Februaries and March, we saw our volume up about 12% on runs um, overall. So, yes. My second question is on the lip funding. Does that come in a lump sum um, or is it uh, monthly? How does it's that a monthly allocation, um, which let me also add a little bit to that, although we think that the funding will come through because of the delays that this um, federal and state clash has created, um, the they are not obligated to disperse those funds until the end of the quarter. So where we normally get an allocation every month, what's likely to happen is we won't get any money in July, August, or September, and then they will allocate in October for July, August, September, and October. So from a cash perspective, we're gonna be hurt the, the next three months by, right now we're getting, what, 40,000, 45? Well, we got 111,000. That's for three months, right? Yeah. So. Um, we won't get any money for the next three months, but they'll make it up in October. So, uh, 